this is an explanation of how to use a volumetric burette. And remember guys, always wear goggles in lab. So you're going to need a ring stand, a burette clamp that looks like this, and your volumetric burette, as well as a solution that's going to go in it. And something like this to hold them back of the burette for contrast is really helpful. To attach the burette clamp to the ring stand, this hole in the middle with a thumb screw is what slides over the ring stand. And you just tighten it down with the thumb screw. So this can hold two volumetric burettes. And to add the volume or to hold the volumetric burette, you just open this and put it in there. Make sure it's level. Um, and you can adjust this if you need to to read it or do what you need to. When you first fill the burette with your solution, you're going to want to make sure that it's, it's clean and there's nothing in there but the solution that you're going to put in there. So when you get your burette, rinse it with DI water three times, uh, making sure it goes through the, the tip, and I'll show you that in a moment. After that, take a little bit of the solution that you're going to put into the burette, and just a few milliliters, put it into the burette, turn it sideways, well, less than this, turn it sideways, and turn it so that you coat the entire inside of the burette and then dump that out. It's always useful to have a waste beaker handy. And then fill up the burette with that solution. The zero is at the top and the total volume, the, la the largest volume is somewhere down towards the bottom but not all the way at the bottom. Once you fill up your burette with your solution, there's still gonna be air in the tip. You can see here there's none of this solution down here, you need to get that air out. So take your waste beaker, open up the stopcock, and flick this until all the air bubbles get out, and then stop. With the stopcock, which is right here, it's closed, the stopcock is closed so nothing can come through the tip when it's perpendicular to the tip, just like this. When the stopcock is parallel in line with the tip of the burette, then it's open and liquid will come out. So we have our solution in our burette. We've cleared all the air bubbles out of the tip. And the next thing you need to do is measure the volume, um, your initial volume in your burette. With these burettes, the closest marks are a tenth of a milliliter apart, 0.1 milliliters apart, which means that you will always record any measurement you make with these burettes to two places past the dec decimal, one hundredth of a milliliter. The units are milliliters, little m, capital L. So to read this volume, I'm going to take my, my contrast card here and hold it up in back of the, the burette. And again, I'm reading the bottom of the meniscus. In this particular case, the meniscus is between the 24 and the 23. So it, it increases down. That's the thing to be aware of here, which means that it's between 23 and 24. It's going to be 23 point something something. So we need to get those last two decimal places. Reading this volume, I know it's between 23 and 24, and it's just beneath the 23.8. It starts with 23.1, 0.2, and so on. Another thing to be aware of when you're using a, a burette is when you're adding solution from this burette into whatever container you are, the bottom mark here, it's not at the very bottom of the burette you want to make sure you do not go past the very bottom mark. There aren't any marks past that, so you will have no idea how much you've added at that point. 